Hello, my name is Klaus Olsen. I'm an associate professor at Dania Academy here in Denmark. I teach marketing and project management. This is a small tutorial about how to use Project Libre, the tool that we primarily use in our project management classes. In this tutorial, I'll uh, go through a couple of steps. First, I'll give a short introduction to project management, what it's about, how to use it. Then we'll look at how to create your first project, setting up the tasks, adding resources to the project, assigning resources, and calculating the cost. Lastly, we'll look at the project baseline and the calendar, how to use that. All right, project management contains three aspects. It contains your scope, which is what you're supposed to do. It contains time, the time frame within you need to do your scope, and lastly, budget, how much resources you have to use for this project. Those three things are what you're going to manage in your project management. There's several project management models, but when we're working with Project Libre here, we're working with the waterfall model. You probably heard about Agile and other types of project management, but we'll get to that in a later cast. The first thing you have to do is go to www.projectlibre.com. Here is a big download button, press it, download the program, and start installing it. When you've installed it, open up the program, this is the screen you'll see. In this screen, select the Create New Project, then you're ready to go. After pressing the Create New Project, you'll see this screen. First, fill in project name, then fill in your own name as project manager, or if someone else is project manager, their name. If you're starting the project today, you can leave the date as it is. If not, adjust it to the day you're actually starting the project. The last part to fill in is the notes here, so that you can better remember what the project was about initially. Project Libre can be a little bit difficult to find your way around in, therefore, the top menu here is the first place you click when you want to go somewhere. Then you get this menu bar here. In this menu bar, if you want the Gantt chart, clicking on that will show you the Gantt chart. Gantt chart here and your task lists here. Task lists we're now going to fill in. And that's when your project management actually starts. Now we try it on the computer. As mentioned, this is your welcome screen. You click on create project, type in the project name, your own name. I'll leave the starting date for now. And Click OK. As mentioned, finding your way back can be a little bit tricky. Notice up here, I'm clicking on the menu bar and it changes, but nothing here is changing. Down in the next one, I'd select the things what I want to see and can then change my menu bar. Now I'm back and able to start typing in my tasks. When you double click on the task, you'll get this, the task information. In the task information, you can adjust the name of the task, adjust duration, and work. Work here, we set for eight hours. When you have filled in all the tasks that you need for your project. Next step is connecting them. There's a natural link between some of your tasks. For example, you need to set up your project before you can do the group meeting. The way to connect tasks is by clicking on the task you want to connect from, dragging to the task you want to connect to. You'll notice this infinity symbol let it go of the mouse cursor on the next task, we'll connect these two tasks. So, as mentioned, we're now going to add tasks. Simply clicking in the name field and start typing. I 
I also wanted to add the work column. So it was right clicking in the menu up here, insert column, and selecting work. Clicking OK. And now I have my work column. I could also change individual tasks. I double click on any task, find that. And here we have the details for the task. I might change the work time for this task to 15 hours. Notice it has also changed over here. As we're getting more tasks, the overview can become more complicated. So what I'm now going to do is I would like to group some tasks. I'll add a small task here. Call it group of tasks. I'll then select the following three tasks which I want to group. Right click on the numbers out here and select indent. Now I've grouped the tasks. I also want to like to have task one coming before task three. So linking these tasks is done by clicking on the bar out here, holding the main, uh, mouse button down, dragging it down to task three, and now they are linked. This means that task one needs to be done before task three. So now you've got your project set up but there's no one working on the project. You're not using any materials. That's when we need to add your resources. Resources can be found by clicking on the resource and the resource button. That will give you an empty menu bar where you can start typing in the same way as you were typing in your tasks. Now we want to connect the tasks and the resources. The way to do that is by going to Tasks, clicking on the Gantt, and then you'll get the list of tasks. In the task list you have here, you double click and you'll get the menu. In the menu you click on the resource tab and you'll be able to add your resources. Resources adding are done by clicking on that one. Clicking on that one will give you the list of the resources we have added. You click on them and assign. Now we've added our resources to the task, but we still want to have an overview of how much time people are spending. So, moving back into our resources, we want to click on the resource usage. The resource usage will give us this diagram here and it will highlight if people are spending more time on tasks than they actually have hours in the day. So, on the computer I'm now going to show you how to link the tasks to resources. But first we need to create some resources, so click on resources and resources in the menu brings up this menu. I'll just start typing in the name field. I now have two resources that I can use. I go back to my tasks, task, Gantt, and I'll double click on one of my tasks. In the task detail information, I click on resources and this small icon up here. Then I'll be shown the different resources I'm capable of adding. Clicking on it, I click assign. Now Johnny is assigned to task 2. Just close these again and you'll see Johnny mentioned for task 2 out here. I also mentioned that you could get an overview of how much your resources are utilized. So we go back into the resource view and click on resource usage. See, Johnny here is doing task 2, 15 hours.
The last big area we're going to talk about here is calendar management. You want to make sure that people are able to work in the times that you set them for working. So, you go into File and click Calendar. When you click in Calendar, you'll see this menu and be able to change the working calendar. This calendar is for everyone involved in the project. If you want to change something in the working calendar, for example, giving everyone in the project a day off, you select the day and select non-working time. That will mean that everyone in the project has that day off and nothing is scheduled for that day. Sometimes you also want to do individual calendars. Say Johnny is not working on May 7th. So you want to have just his calendar adjusted. This is not done in the general calendar, but it's done in the resource tab. Remember, you find the resources by clicking resource, resource. Then you want to double click on Johnny. When you get up the details for Johnny, clicking on the small calendar icon will bring up Johnny's calendar. Again, the way to adjust Johnny's calendar is clicking on the date and changing to non-working time. So I'll show you how to adjust the calendar on the computer. So again, we are in the task menu with the Gantt chart showing. I have the small calendar icon up here. Clicking on it will show you the standard calendar for all. I'll then have next Friday to be a non-working time. This means that nobody associated with this project is going to be working on next Friday. However, we also talked about that you would want to have individual calendars at some point. For this, we need to go back into our resource view, resource, resources, double clicking on one of your resources and clicking on the calendar. Now I'm looking at Johnny's calendar. Johnny is still not working next Friday, but he's also not working on next Thursday. So it's just that, non-working time, and now Johnny is not working neither Thursday nor Friday. Now your project is set up, but there's just one thing you need to remember before starting the project. Any project you do will change as soon as you start it. So therefore, you need to save the original plan to see what has changed. The way to save your original plan is by going into your file and clicking Save Baseline. Saving the baseline will create a small shadow below each of your tasks. Later on, when tasks are changed, adjusted, you'll be able to see that shadow stay the same place. The last thing we're going to do was save the baseline. So. How's the calendar or our project looking right now? I'm in my task menu with all my tasks, with people associated. I click Save Baseline. Entire project. OK. And now notice these small shadows below each task. If I were to change now any of my tasks, say this task suddenly become 15 hours, the, the bar changes, but the shadow stays. I can now see that originally my project was planned for only this time. This was the introduction to Project Libra. I hope you can use it for something. Revisit, try to play around with it, then you'll quickly get the hang of it. I know it is difficult. I know it's not natural for most of you to work this way, but trust me, You'll love it when you have big projects later on in life. Thank you.